Yes, you read the title of this video correctly. There is, in fact, a talking donkey in the Bible. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today is why in the world is that story in the Bible? What does it mean, if anything, and if it has any sort of relevance to us today as believers? Before we get into the story, thank you for joining me on the Geologian channel. What I do here is I bridge the gap between you and your Bible by answering tough questions like these so you can better understand your Bible and you can be better equipped in your walk with God. We're introduced to this talking donkey in chapter 22 of the book of Numbers. And for context, the Israelites have been wandering for just about 40 years in the wilderness. So they've left Egypt, they've wandered for 40 years, and they're on the cusp of entering the promised land. And at, right at the beginning of chapter 22 in Numbers, it states, Then the Israelites traveled to the plains of Moab and camped along the Jordan across from Jericho. While they're camping here, the king of Moab, he does not like the sight of this monstrous mob of these Israelites. He's afraid of them. He's heard what he what they've done to the other kings that stood up against them, and he wants to get rid of them. So he hires a local celebrity uh, who, who is a prophet, and his name is Balaam. And he asks Balaam to come and curse the Israelites for him. And so then Balaam agrees after a, a, few, a little discussion with God, he agrees to come do this. And on his journey, he comes up against the angel of the Lord. Now, he can't see this, but his donkey can. And the donkey repeatedly leads him off the road. He gets furious with this donkey, and he starts beating it. And then we read these words in verse 28. Then the Lord opened the donkey's mouth, and it said to Balaam, What have I done to you to make you beat me these three times? And what's interesting is that Balaam just responds. He just answers the question, and they have a short conversation, and then the Lord steps in and explains to him, I was going to kill you. I was in your way because you're not going the way that I want you to. What in the world is the purpose of God making this donkey talk? What does this mean? So having some cultural context about Balaam the prophet, it gives us a much greater understanding of why the donkey is talking to him. And we, we get this understanding from archaeology, thankfully. In 1967, archaeologists excavated a city known as Deir Allah. And here they found a sanctuary where it had been destroyed by an earthquake. And the walls had tumbled in. And on one of those fallen walls, the plaster that was left over it, they actually found a text inscribed on the plaster. And when they deciphered this and they translated it, it actually mentioned someone named Balaam son of Beor, and it specifically states that he is a divine seer, which is another word uh, from the biblical text that means prophet. So this is very interesting because it's this. it seems to be the same person, Balaam, son of Beor, who is a seer or a prophet. This is the exact same name. It's the exact same attribution to son of Beor, and he has the exact same role or job. His occupation is the exact same from the Bible. And it's from around a similar region. We're talking about the exact same person. And what's interesting in this text, when they translated it, it's, it's a sort of apocalyptic writing. Uh, there are two different divine councils in this, or at least groupings of gods. One comes down to him and lets him know that the other is going to destroy the city and that he needs to uh, do certain things to prevent this from happening. And so he does so. And what's interesting about this is it describes... Uh, the, the behaviors of animals being turned and flipped, and everything that's in nature is upside down. It's not correct, and these are signs of what's going to happen and how it's, everything is just going to go awry. And so this is important to know because it calls Balaam a diviner, a divine seer, and it mentions divination. And so this gives us another clue, and so divination in the ancient Near Eastern world is very, very important. They would do divination through different processes in order to understand the will of the gods. So they would do this in different ways. Sometimes it was more a celestial focus, so they were looking at the stars, they were looking at the constellations, uh, different things. They, they would look at these to find omens, to determine things that were going to happen, whether they would be good or whether they would be evil. Things out of the ordinary, whether or not the sun and the moon are in the sky at the same time, or if they're in their usual places. Others would look at the earth, the more uh, 
animal kingdom. They would look at how the animals were behaving, just like in the Dar Allah inscription. Are the animals behaving the way they normally are? Are their migration patterns off? Uh, are is the roles of predator and prey flipped? They would look at these things for omens for what God was telling them. And there was also a very particular divination ceremony they would do is that they would sacrifice a sheep or even a goat and they would look at its entrails, so the, the guts of the animal. This is called ecstasy. And so they would uh, look at the liver in particular. And so they would be praying to their God, asking for this God, which whomever they were trying to pray to, to use the liver as a tablet right on this liver and so they would pray to him, ask him a question, offer up the animal, and they would cut it open, take the liver out, and they would look at specific lines on this liver or markings on the liver and interpret that as omens. And so hopefully you would get an answer from your God written on this liver. So this is divination. These are the things they had to do to determine what their gods were trying to tell them. So this is who Balaam is. He is a prophet. He is a diviner. He, he performs divination, and he does this for hire, as we see in the biblical text. Balak, king of Moab, hires him out to come bring a negative omen, a curse upon the Israelites. Now, Balaam can't do this. He tries multiple times, and God, Yahweh, tells him, no, I've put a blessing on these people. You can't curse them. But Balaam goes along with the king of Moab anyway, and that's where the talking donkey enters. The donkey prevents him from being killed, and God makes the donkey speak. And so now that we know this about Balaam, that he is a diviner, he actually looks at the animal kingdom to understand omens, to understand the God's will, the will of these different divine councils, he should have noticed why this donkey was speaking. And this also makes sense on why he doesn't absolutely lose his mind. Like, if, if I was walking along and a donkey just started talking to me, that's really weird. And I would probably freak out. But Balaam talked right back to the donkey. It explains his understanding. But notice something very important. This omen that Balaam would be hired out to interpret, and that's his whole job, he cannot interpret this one. He has no idea that there's a the angel of the Lord is standing in front of him waiting to kill him. He has no idea what this sign means. He's just angry that the donkey won't take him straight down the road. So the significance of this is that this sign was tailor-made for Balaam. It's within his occupation. This is what he does on a daily basis, and he can't interpret it. This is extremely important because throughout the narrative of the wandering and as the Israelites come into the land, God time and time again shows that he knows the religion of the pagans and he uses it to show his glory. He overcomes their pagan religion and shows them that your gods, your divination is not all powerful. I am and I am above this. And he, and he just straight up shows him, you can't control my words. You can't make me give a curse or a blessing. You can't even interpret what I'm doing unless I tell you to your face. That's what this story is about. It is a message to show that God, Yahweh, he is God, and that there will be no divination. Another important thing is that what the Israelites had, the relationship with Yahweh, is entirely different than what Balaam would have had with his divine counsel and what any of the other pagans around would have had with their gods. They had to cut open animals and look at their livers to just try and determine what their gods were saying to them. They had to hope that they were interpreting these odd lines on an organ from the inside of an animal, that they were doing this correctly. Because if they got it wrong, it could be devastating for them. Yahweh doesn't work this way. He tells his people exactly what's on his mind. Now, his whole will is not revealed to them all 100% right at that time, but he lays out his laws for them. He gives them their co the covenant, and if they need to know something, they can come before him. There's high priests that are mediators. He is there, and he's dwelling with them. There's no odd liver they have to look at. They don't have to question whether they interpreted it right or wrong. God makes his will known to his people. And this is the same for us today. We don't have to wonder what God is doing out there. We have his word. We have scripture to tell us everything that he has done and everything that he's planning to do. So don't let the story of the talking donkey be a stumbling block to you. 
It happens here specifically to show Balaam that Yahweh is God. It happens here to show the Israelites that Yahweh is God and that he makes his will known to his people when he dwells with them. And he makes his will known to us through his word and through his spirit. We don't have to question that. I hope this video has been a blessing to you and I hope you have been more equipped to better understand your Bible. Until next time, friends. Thank you.